Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a 1v1 for you today on Road to Tunis between two awesome players. Playing as a Wehrmacht, we've got Bunker Buster from South Korea, ranked number 11 overall, using the Mechanized Battle Group. And then playing as the Americans, the current world champ, Farage from Hungary, ranked number 1, using the Airborne Battle Group. Casting this one with me is my buddy Spades, someone who really enjoys testing in his spare time and also really understands kind of the nuances and the mechanics and abilities in this game. We thought this one was a lot of fun to watch. Both players clearly had a plan in mind when they loaded in, and they're both bound and determined to make it work. The result is a match that has kind of like a tug-of-war style struggle, especially in the center. Both players pursuing that just one decisive engagement that'll put them over the top. Anyway, that's all. I hope you enjoy, and we'll get into the match. Yeah. All right. It so on the south side yeah. of the map, on the right, in the default map view, we've got Bunker Buster playing as a Wehrmacht, and he immediately goes with two Pioneers and Infantry Company. And then on the opposite side of the map here, we have Farage, uh, who locks in Airborne and Pathfinders immediately. He's building an Engineer and is also building a Barracks. So, uh, interested to see, I mean, he didn't even have Rangers in his, his lineup, but interested to see how he plays this. Uh, that's not normally how I see Airborne used at the beginning, so... Uh, I'm sure the number one player in the world has some ideas uh, for how to deal with this. An interesting start was that he uh, converts the scout squad into the Pathfinder squad, but as he converts it, uh, he kind of dilly-dallies back at base to pick up that extra model. There was actually a neat little bug that you used to be able to do to be able to like split a squad from one point to another to cap two points at once. Oh, really? They, they patched that when they made the update to the Pathfinders, yeah? Indeed they did. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so Bunker's got his first Grenadier squad out. Bergy's got a rifle squad out. Both sides kind of capping up to their right, going for their uh, medium fuel points here. And Bunker Buster hasn't locked anything in. He actually doesn't have Breakthrough uh, in his build-out at all. He's got Luftwaffe, Mechanize, and Coastals. Uh, if we see coastals in a 1v1, uh, that would definitely be interesting and not necessarily meta, so... Uh, but we'll see how he approaches this here. I'm interested in your thoughts. If you're not going to select... Because, so like, coastals, you get the coastal reserve uh, units right away. Luftwaffe, you get access to the Falchion Pioneers. If you're not going to select a battle group right off the rip as Wehrmacht, what are you, what are you normally thinking? As the Pathfinders cap this uh, cutoff here and then change their mind. I think that uh, the tech route that Bunker Buster is going right now just leaves him open for more reactionary plays. When you get up to the higher levels of micromanagement, uh, you typically just respond to be the most optimal decision for what battle group to pick to counter whatever decisions your opponent has made. So at the moment, Farrig is down because Farrig is exposed that he has gone uh, paratrooper or airborne. Yeah, and I suppose the Luftwaffe Doctrine, if you hold out for a little bit later on, right, you get the either Manpower Reserves or the 88s, you get the Luftwaffe Loiter, uh, so you don't necessarily need to select it right away. And man, Farage being very aggressive here, now pushing on the fuel point, uh, his rifles are going to retreat in the face of the MG42 and the Grenadiers. And this is fairly common for the U.S., uh, given that their riflemen do outscale uh, the Grenadiers' early game, as well as just trying to get around that MG spot with the scout squad or pathfinders that they have. Trying to just keep the Wehrmacht player on the back foot early game since they're weakest. Yeah, I, I find that early game, like no upgrades, the riflemen versus Grenadiers' interactions now feel very like RNG focused. Um, I would say at point blank, it's in favor of the Grenadier, but um, at range, the Grenadier will hold out perfectly fine. Yeah. It, which is ironic, because the Riflemen have uh, access to the squad leader model has got a Thompson. I don't actually know if there's anything theoretically different for the damage profile for that Thompson. Uh, I know that it's nothing but a joke when it comes to the infantry section's pistol, uh, that it's just another Lee Enfield rifle. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it is... Oh, nice. Pioneers lure Pathfinders in on a mine. They drop a model. Bunker Buster has his... Uh, is that the Panzer Grenadier company out? Yeah, I think so. So he's already teched up. 
Faraji now getting his infantry support center and weapon support center up. Maybe he's going Paris for Zooks. Panzer Grenadier squad on the way out for Bunker Buster. The Faraji putting a lot of pressure on. I mean, looking at the tap ma tack map here, he still hasn't capped up part of the map, but he's being very aggressive trying to reach into Bunker Buster's resource points. MG here forced to retreat by Rifleman in green cover. And all of these rifle squad models have night sights on, which is kind of wild. Alright, so now we're seeing Panzer Grenadiers hit the field. Uh, for Farragies, getting a half track out. And Bunker Buster kind of on the back foot here. Farragies successfully took the cutoff. Yeah, Farrag is most certainly trying to ride this wave of momentum by getting the earliest vehicle he can push out. I mean, I expect to see the 75 mil on it, right? Uh, most certainly. It's got that barrage ability, but and then obviously it fares fairly well against light vehicles. He's converting to the quad now. Oh, to the quad. Okay. Panzer Grenadiers push a rifle squad off. Fergie's point blank on top of these Panzer Grens to invalidate them. Yeah. Maybe push them around a little. Well, and the Panzer Grenadiers really have no answer uh, to the to the vehicle. Captain hits a mine. Nade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I doubt Fergie's gonna let that one happen. Here's the quad. And so the irony here is the quad's kind of a joke compared to the DAC flackling. Like, look, no models dropped, a bunch of damage, but no suppression at all either. Um, I kind of miss... It's very certainly it's a glass cannon similar to that of the Humbar. Yeah. I, I miss the rules from Coat 2 where they could suppress, but only when they were stationary. I I like that from a balanced perspective for these, these flak half-decks. Well, in short order, we'll be seeing a lot of changes to the game. Specifically, time to kill is the only certainty we know of. Yeah. So, Farage going for a sniper now. And Bunker Buster reacting to the flak track by getting a pack 40 out. And you can see he's really very much focused on recouping his resources here. Uh, he's giving up pretty much the, south, the west side of the map in exchange for trying to regain uh, his fuel point on the east side. Our enemy has control over all victory points. Grenadiers moving, fire, try to fire. position for a Panzerfaust, but don't get in range. Grenadiers on the fire. And sniper no. amount of pressure here. Uh, <laughs> double fuel. Uh, Farrag is going to be able to tech very quickly. And, and mines everywhere with these engineers. Yeah, Farrag is built to deal with this infantry heavy build from Bunker Buster. And the Panzer Grenadier company doesn't give him great options for vehicles. He has to attack for the Stug. Sniper takes the first shot here. And there's really no he's one... He's only picking up some Gren models. Uh, it's good to always keep a Gren squad married to your Panzer Grens or your P. Jaegers. Uh, whatever it is uh, that you manage to pick up for an expensive elite infantry to get those free reinforcements. Yeah. So they do a little bit of damage to the sniper. Well, the is just kiting as much as he can, just baiting, trying to keep him on the hook, like pack reeling in a fishing line. Yeah, pack 40 takes a big chunk out of the half track. Oh, the sniper oh, knocks him. The oh, they're gonna get him! Oh. Wow. P Grins eventually retreat, but. Man, that is worth it if I've ever seen it. That's a big pickup for Bunker Buster. The, be it confidence or uh, uh, overconfidence or just... Uh, I just can't believe he let him have it. Oh, the P Grens down to one model after the mine. It's a good thing the engineers are shooting rubber bullets. We are down to 200 points. And now Bunker Buster locking and mechanizing and getting an 8 rod out. Baraji getting another sniper. I don't know if he realizes that's probably... Uh, the eight rods accidentally a really good counter to that. He hasn't seen it yet. He doesn't know about it. Mm -hmm. And he technically has no idea what battle group Bunker Buster went. Yeah, he sees it now. You see if he cancels the sniper. 
No, the sniper's gonna get built. Eight rod doing a bunch of damage to these rifles. Finally drops one model. And actually the eight rod now rotating back across the map as the majority. Oh, the gun. Oh, the airdropped AT gun, smart. So looks like Fergie's probably gonna skip motor pool tech then. Uh, that is the big benefit to going airborne is that you can get either an MG or get an AT gun without actually having to tech appropriately. Yeah, rifles get clumped up here. Eight rod does a fair amount of damage. Sniper in the middle now, plinking away at Panzer Grenadiers. Supported by an AT gun and the flak track. Has arrived. A second eight rod here. And that is a good answer to the infantry build from Farage, who's now reacting by getting grenades out for his riflemen. Pioneers with the minesweeper start to identify some of these mines laid everywhere. As we've said previously in some casts, all good things come in pairs. I'd love to see a second AT gun from Farage in short order. Yeah, I think he'll recognize the need for it when he sees this uh, eight rod pack. And they identify engineers laying a mine. The engineers luckily don't finish it. Eight rods are going to push right past this AT gun's arc. Pack, smart to do it. It's pack, smart to dive past the arc instead of reset. The pack 40 sets up to get a shot off on the half track. Oh, this AT gun knocked out. Rifle squad engine Chris one of the eight rods. But eventually... Bunker is in a very unique position. He has to stay committed to keeping this AT gun down because once you're in the arc, if they recrew it in front of you, they will get a shot. Yeah. Actually, really good infantry push to support the eight rods. Oh man, and they pick up the captain as well. Uh, that LMG is just sitting there and the P-Grens are going to grab it. And now instead of Farage having two AT guns, the double eight rats do. So Farage suddenly finding himself on the back foot from an army composition perspective. Sniper taking shots from his resources. own base. <laughs> Yeah, uh... There's no place safe like the base. Oh, he's got tons of fuel. Those p are juiced. Yeah, I think... I'm not... Oh, they... He doesn't lose them. That 1919 does a lot of damage to the sniper and is forced to back up. Eight rods kiting the rifles here. AT guns capture Fergie the center doesn't DP. have that many options in this particular position. Uh, he has to wait until he can call in another AT gun, and he's already suffered a lot of bleed. He's low on manpower. Yeah, and he's got the tank depot coming out. Meanwhile, Bunker getting a third 8-rod, and honestly, I can't argue with the logic here. Double AT gun, lots of rifles still on the field, plus the sniper. These 8-rods are a great counter. Lots of mobility, as long as he can keep Fergie on the back foot. You see Fergie still trying to lay mines, hoping he can catch one of these eight rods out. Grenadiers exchanging shots with the Pathfinder. Sniper will come in and change that. Really, yeah, what Fergie needs here, honestly, is another AT gun. Something with a hard counter to deal with these eight rods. Here's another solid two-minute window of uh, torture with these eight rads before any kind of response like a Sherman or another AT gun comes in. Yeah, I mean, you could probably get a Hellcat out right away, but the eight rods will actually probably do a fair amount of damage if they get on its well, side of not, uh, He's not armored battle group, so it's going to take a while to build that Hellcat. Yeah. Oh, man. These rifles, triple eight rod, and now Bunker being really, really... Uh, he's just very comfortable with this. He knows what the threat is, and it's basically sticky bombs, which he is not worried about. Fergie sniper still knocking down a couple of models here. Actually, if I'm him, uh, oh, Grenadier squad goes down to the rifles. If I'm bunker, I want to get those AT guns back to my base and topped off, or at least pull the Grens out to to merge with them. Because the last oh, thing, you, the last thing you need is a sniper just taking one model and then the AT gun is gone. The good thing the bunker was doing here was keeping those AT guns married to those vehicles because that's where they need to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Fergie, until he gets an armored vehicle, it just doesn't have anything good to push on this mass in the center. But here we go. Here's a recce loiter. Fergie trying to better understand the situation. 
the saving grace for Fergie here is that what he suffered in bleed, he didn't lose in territory. Uh, the territory was not grabbed, uh, despite the VPs, but he kept his fuel the entire time. Yeah, and so Bunker has the triple cap now, but he only has 130 VPs remaining compared to Farage's 390. And if you look at the KD, it's honestly still slightly in Farage's favor. So that just goes to show you just how effective Farage has been early on in this game, despite the you current- say the shoes on the other foot. <laughs> yeah. Here are the eight rods come to run down the pathfinders. Mine's going up in the rear, but still no AT gun. Hellcat out uh, in probably another 30 seconds. Oh, they set off the mine. Two of the engineers go down. And now the eight rods are going to back up and not pursue. In fact, they might move over here to help deal with this rifle squad in this building. Bunker is being very smart about not over-investing. He's had two minutes of torture, and he's going to wait until he sees what Farage's answer to that is. Yeah, he has the ability for Tier 4. Oh, a fourth 8-rod. I think he's convinced he's found the right strategy. They see the Hellcat and immediately rotate away. Meanwhile, the Quad 50 on the east side of the map forces off the MG42, but there's no infantry to support the cap. Eight rods rotating, looking for it. Hellcat also rotating. Oh, but the small target size. The Hellcat whiffs. One eight rod eight hits rod a mine. mine. Impressive that Fergie has been able to lay, continue to lay mines like this, despite kind of the dynamic nature of this engagement. And his confidence level to keep doing it is at an all-time high, given how many times he's been spotted mid-plant. Yeah. So pioneers do some damage to the mine. And now Bunker Buster getting the Panzer Grenadier Headquarters Veterancy, which is brilliant, because it supports not only his uh, Panzer Grenadiers and AT guns, but also his eight rods. Hot tip. Didn't know that, but captured AT guns don't qualify for the veterancy upgrade. Yeah, that's something I noticed as well. It's crazy. Mechanized assault on now, and it looks like it is time for this sniper to feel some fear. Eight rod comes in, baits out the shot from the Hellcat, but only one AT gun shot. <laughs> oh, the eight rod gets the kill on the sniper. Wow, the quad 50 eats another AT gun round. If it wasn't for mechanized assault, uh, that might have gone far differently. What an awesome play. That 8-rod's going to get away with the repairing on the move. And now here comes the 8-rod pack. The quad 50 knocked out by the pack 40s. And the Hellcat forced back into his base. He's got a second one out now, but these... Ooh, another mine. These dual pack 40s are actually in a great position to grab a couple shots on this Hellcat. Good. For some reason, they don't set up. There they go. The Pathfinder goes down. Pack 40 about to go down to this rifle squad. One goes down. Oh, eight rods not doing much to the Hellcat. And they're forced to back out or risk getting uh, knocked out themselves. Pack 40 starts to back to donate up. Two AT guns? It looks like he'll be able to get one away. Oh man, one eight rod goes down, second about to go. Oh. oh, a Faust coming in on this uh, Hellcat. Got it? No, I guess not. Ergy smells blood in the water. Yeah, and he's going for it. Swing and a miss. Pack is knocked out, another one on the field, but all the way in base sector. Oh, that was a great engagement for Farragee. He traded Pathfinders uh, and his Quad 50 Cal for two 8 rods. And he cleared a couple of AT guns in the process. He's actually going to pick up this Pack 40 with the Rifle Squad to Im immediately get a lot of pressure from the 8 rod here. Now, pack 40 cleared. Hellcat comes up to support. Both 8 rods will take some damage and then have to back off. Ideally, Farragee should destroy Nevermind. <laughs> you read your mind. I mean, looking at this, though, 
I think Bunker Buster's still got the right idea. AT guns, another sniper for Farragy. Holy cow, he is determined. Yeah, I think the double pack with the eight rods. And then probably go for, what, Panthers? At the end, use eight rods to deal with the infantry and get a Panther out as a hard counter to the, uh, the Hellcats. I'd say he's probably going to invest in the call and he's not going to go any further. He's going to just buy the, uh, he's going to buy the call in Panther. Yeah, there's no, there's no price difference, right? So it's just if you're going to have the ability to get Brum Bears and P4s and stop streaking. He's just thrown so much fuel at these eight rads. It worked for him for a while. He's cut down the VP margin significantly. But still insane to me, Farage's winning the KD battle. What now? It's almost like Farage's really good at this game. <laughs> Location so a brief pause here while the recce overflight uh, circles the base here and then Bunker Buster goes to repair his eight rods. Hellcats in the process of very slowly being repaired. The Hellcats got the buffs for the first strike, that veteran Z1. That'll certainly help. Oh man. The rifles get out of the building, but they take a lot of damage. Gren's knocked down one model. Only one remaining, but out of range, so the rifle squad will get away. Oh. AT gun gets shot off on the eight rod. <clears throat> so Farage's starting to amass some decent anti-vehicle power here. It looks like the Hellcats are a force to be reckoned with. It doesn't matter how many AT guns they have, uh, the speed those Hellcats can move at. Yeah, I agree. And properly micro, although they're out of position now, and these rifles might get knocked out. Farragy replacing Lost Infantry with uh, paratroopers, which I really like. They're going to scale better into the late game. Do you know what ISC upgrades Farragy has grabbed? Oh. Uh, at the moment, zero. None of them. Interesting. So the 8 rods decap the fuel point here. Double pack takes a big chunk out of the Hellcat. Something to point out for the Hellcats for first strike. You'll notice that Farage doesn't get the 50 cal upgrade because if the 50 cal shoots even a single bullet, it removes the first strike bonus. That is one of the most useful tips I've ever heard in this game. Like, I don't know how you know that, but that's awesome. Because I used to be an angry US player. <laughs> All right, AT guns are Hellcat hunting. Deterred by the sniper. Here come the eight rods. Oh, hit another a mine. mine. Man, really, really good use of the mines here. Zooks on the paratroopers. The answer is going to be the Hellcat and the rifle squad. The Hellcat on that the flank here. Is just keeping everything top off. Yeah, and the Hellcat's just whiffing on a couple of these shots. Here comes a grenade onto the pack 40. Another pack in the back, and I like this, the layered AT guns. Gives him some flexibility. Oh, one more shot. And there it is. One Hellcat gone. Now, Farage's got the resources for another. Oh, another 8-rod. So I think you're right. I think Bunker Buster has decided if he really needs the late-game armor, it's just going to be a Panther. And he's going to use a combination of packs and 8-rods. Oh man, they found another mine on the center VP. The thing to pay attention to is Bunker Buster's entire crux of his strategy was picking up mechanized assault instead of zeroing artillery and using that self-repair and making your infantry harder to hit. Uh, if there's ever a great example as to why pick mechanized assault over zeroing artillery, it's this match. Yes. I think, you know, in this case, one, not, not only is the mechanized art, uh, assault a really great ability, but I think the zeroing artillery... Oh, Panzer Grenadiers get knocked out by rifles and the sniper. The other Hellcat destroyed. Now Bulldozer on the field. But three packs is more than enough for the, the Bulldozer here. 
Mechanized assault triggered yet again to keep these eight rods alive. It's yeah. like a drip feed of health. Yeah. I back to your point about zeroing Artie though, I really don't think that Farage is the kind of player you're gonna catch with a zeroing Artie barrage and knock out a bunch of units. Even as his AT and his Hellcats he kept in separate lanes, right? He's way too talented for that. So to me, it's almost a, like mechanized assault makes a ton of sense. One AT gun decrewed. Rifleman closed to throw the sticky bomb onto an eight rod. Pair is doing a lot of damage with bazookas. And now almost certainly, yep, one eight rod goes down. Oh, pioneers almost go down to the bulldozer. And they do. Sniper picks up the last model. And the pair is forced to retreat. I thought they really had the eight rods on the ropes there. Grenadiers in the center, losing a lot of models to come into the rifle and the sniper. Oh, Pack gets recruited by Fergie, but then knocked out by the eight rod. Here comes another sticky. Uh, this is a wild engagement back and forth and look how aggressive he's being with these AT guns Mechanized assault again. Oh Wow, this sniper the sniper got that second shot off really fast Another grenadier squad down Mechanized assault activated Yeah On the topic of him picking up those paratroopers, what's really cool is that they get to kind of act like a Panzerjäger squad um, because they can go stealth and hold fire. Uh, the only thing that they don't have going for them is that they don't have the ability to force target vehicles only with their bazookas, mm -hmm. which is sometimes kind of frustrating given that they have the bazooka upgrade option. Yeah. Bunker uses the merge ability of the Grenadier to top off his AT guns. So he's got this triple AT gun group in the center. MG taking fire from the bulldozer on the west side of the map. Uh, and this pack of eight rods forces the uh, the Paris to back off again. And they can push right here, right up through the center, really whittling down the Paris and now pushing on the AT gun and the sniper. Oh, nice mine. mine. And the, oh, the Paris do eat it. He's got 19 seconds on mechanized assault cooldown, <laughs> and he wishes he had it. Oh man, that AT gun whiffs again. They don't make them like they used to. Yeah, awesome push though, and then the foresight from Fergie to put a mine there is mind blowing. You're like, fine, you want to base dive me? That's cool, but you're gonna pay for it. Top notch mining by Faraji. Given that it's US, no one ever plants mines as US. Most of the time, people don't even make an engineer. Yeah. Grenadier is giving their lives just to ensure <laughs> the center VP is capped for the fatherland. And at this point, Bunker's not even bothering to replace them with infantry. He's just getting pioneers out for the utility. Here comes the recce loiter. Eight rods think about diving the sniper. They do a lot of damage. Oh, but they're at risk. One goes down. Focus sight on the other AT gun, but eight rod able to get out of range. And Farage keeping the game at a stalemate, about 100 VPs. Bunker is finally winning the KD battle. 28 minutes in, and I think what we're on our seventh eight rod. He's dedicated to the cause. His commitment's just that deep. MG42 gets away. Engineers take a couple shots at it. Oh, they actually drop a model, but they don't commit. With the mechanized battle group's raid package, just using eight rads as infantry squads, basically. Yeah, with both sides really dependent on team weapons, you would think some sort of artillery, even just a mortar, would do a lot of work. Another mine strike. 
Fortune's going around for a deep flank. Yeah, the mechanized assault. Here it comes. AT gun is turned to face, but the sniper is out of position. And Farage saw it coming. Yeah, rifle squads retreat. Eight rods already on the flank here, the AT guns. Triple packs coming up. Here comes the rocket loiter, but the eight rods a little bit faster than mechanized assault. So it whips one AT gun down. Packs moving up looking for this bulldozer. And this other AT gun also gonna go down. Will Bunker start destroying them? That's the question. I think so. He's got his triple pack here. This should be easy. One AT gun gets recruited, but they're just gonna sacrifice those models to uh <laughs> the angry god that is Bunker Buster right now. Oh, this rifle squad. Oh, and it whips a shot, too. And the bulldozer gets knocked out. Fergie's floating a ton of resources. There it is. 180 got knocked out. And Fergie gives it up. Alright, we're back. As always, going to start with the review of the build order. So for Bunker Buster, again, playing Vermont Mechanized Battle Group, he starts with two Pioneers, gets his infantry company, and then he really focuses on the early game with two Grenadiers and MG42, uh, trying to just hold down the center and his, uh, his fuel on kind of the east side of the map there. Then he gets a Panzer Grenadier company out relatively early. I think it's at like the just under the four minute mark. Gets one squad of Panzer Grenadiers, Texas Med Station, gets a Pack 40, and then that's when he selects the mechanized battle group and really leans into the eight rods. So he builds a initially builds four eight rods before he builds anything else. He he does steal an M1AT gun from Farage, which probably helps. Then he gets the Panzer Grenadier Company Officers Quarters, that tier three veterancy boost, which not only applies to the Panzer Grens and the Pack 40s, but also applies to his eight rods. So it's really useful. He then, over the course of the next couple of minutes, builds three more Pack 40s and two more eight rods, as well as a Grenadier squad and a Pioneer squad to kind of offset some losses. And honestly, that's it. That's his entire build order. He really just leans into the synergy between the pack of eight rods, especially once they get veterancy, uh, and his little pack wall that he uses to keep away the Hellcats and eventually the bulldozer from Farage. Meanwhile, on Farage's side, plan is the Americans, the airborne battle group, which he locks in right away. Uh, he goes scouts straight into Pathfinders, leaves him in his base for a second so they pick up that fourth model. Uh, then he gets an engineer out, builds a barracks, and goes into three riflemen, which I thought was interesting. Uh, normally, when I see people play airborne, I see them kind of stall uh, for the you know get the weapon support center, get an MG or two out, uh, get a bazooka, get a sniper. Um, so he clearly wanted to have the infantry play, and he was very effective with it. Um, he really owned most of the map and all three VPs for really the first uh, 10, 12 minutes of the game. He goes infantry support center. Uh, and then he builds a weapon support center here, which again is mainly so he can get uh, his sniper out. Uh, first thing he does though is get an M3 half track that he updates to a quad 50, and then he uh, he gets his first sniper. Um, he techs a med station, which obviously is required when you have a sniper on the field and they take a little bit of damage. Uh, that sniper gets gunned down by Panzer Grenadiers, so he gets a second sniper. He techs his grenades. This is when he's he sees the uh, first eight rod. So having the rifles on the field really helpful. Once he gets the grenades, he has the opportunity for snares. Then he starts dropping uh, AT guns onto the battlefield. Uh, techs up to the tank depot, gets a couple of Hellcats. Uh, second sniper goes down, so he replaces with a third. The third actually lasts the end of the game and ends up triple vet. So sniper's doing a lot of work for him overall. Uh, gets a squad of paratroopers out. Gets an, uh, a Sherman bulldozer out. Unfortunately, it's not alive at the same time he has both Hellcats, which I think would have been... Uh, nice synergy to deal with the, the Vermont build. And at, the end, at the end of the game, he drops in a couple more AT guns. Uh, but once he loses the bulldozer and his paratrooper squad, uh, he throws in the towel. So that's just kind of the, the build order thing here. Uh, I thought it was interesting. You can really tell that Farage really wanted to play with the sniper, um, even though it wasn't necessarily the best counter for uh, the build that Bunker Buster had. And then likewise with, with Bunker Buster, you see um, he was basically stalling for tier three and the eight rod unlock. Uh, and that was kind of his plan throughout. Um, so interesting build orders here from both of these guys, relatively meta for the Fairmont 
um, a little bit less so for Farage. Uh, and with that, we'll grab Spades and get into the post match discussion. All right. So I'm back here with Spades. Uh, lots of interesting stuff to talk about in that game. Some good game mechanic stuff, uh, especially Spades calling out the first strike. Uh, the the 50 cal on top taking away the first strike bonus. That's still my mind is still blown from that. Um, but so as we normally do, kind of starting with uh, the player that lost and, and some changes. So first of all, for Farage, uh we're going to go ahead and say this was an intentional build order. Like he really wanted to make the sniper work. Uh, and in this case, he still almost pulled it off. But the the first thing that we just kind of wanted to highlight was like the extensive uh, use of mines and just honestly like brilliant, brilliant mine placement. Spades, you were saying that like when you see USF opponents, you just normally assume that that mines aren't everywhere. Uh, yeah, the the snipers, uh, not snipers, sorry, uh, the mines uh, for USF, given that most people don't even bother to build an engineer until they finally have a light vehicle. It makes it like pre-programmed every player that plays against us is that they just default don't bother trying to sweep or look for anything mm -hmm. uh given that he only had a single engineer uh the amount of mines that he put together were staggering well and the placement form right you had mines going off on retreat paths uh they almost got the panzer grenadier squad early with that one and then the mines on the footstep of his own base like anticipating the eight rod dive uh i think you know really impressive good forethought and just super like you think about like the micro tax involved with managing this fight this one if you want to cross the map and a super high pressure build that bunker had and he's still just microing and putting these mines everywhere in a way that makes a lot of sense so first off like huge kudos there um you know, one of the things that we mentioned a little bit and like it first, off, I will say it's telling that all of the things that we were talking about with Farage were built are build order related, right? Like, oh, like you were saying, like if he doesn't build the second and third sniper, he gets three more squads of pairs out and that gives him some staying power in the late game, right? Um, uh, most certainly if he ended up with a multitude of bazookas he was floating a ton of fuel he could have gotten the bazooka upgrade he could have gotten the concealment upgrade for his paratroopers to just put them in stealth on hold fire which he temporarily did near the mid of the match mm -hmm. uh, and use those to ambush the eight rads uh, with the increased 33 percent damage it would have really took the wind out of bunker busters uh sails uh given that the natural predator of the sniper is the eight rad uh <laughs> the sniper is just a snack uh and not in any way concerning to an eight rad yeah um man and then other things like hey I, we both or at least i at least thought it was a little unusual going airborne to have such a rifle heavy build at the start but man he used it really well uh really good pressure Within about 10 minutes, he had bunkered down to 130 VPs. So, like, really just mastery of the map there, mastery of the early game. Um, the only thing, you know, maybe because he has a barracks, maybe he gets out of mortar to deal with the the clumped up packs. Um, you know, obviously, he doesn't necessarily have any other, like, real artillery options available to him. He went for the rocket loiter, which I thought was interesting. Not the rocket loiter, the rocket strafe. I thought was interesting really hard to hit eight rods when they're on mechanized assault um maybe the carpet bombing might have been good and helping break up kind of the packs in the center um yeah i'm interested in your thoughts on kind of the approach there like if we if we leave the snipers in play what else does he focus on that helps him kind of get over the hump I think that you're spot on with the carpet bombing and forcing those packs to set up at any given moment to force them to move or wipe all of them or put them behind the pack so they have to go forward. Uh, the use of recon loiter by Farage just shows that all the information in the world can't make up for you know units you don't have, uh, mm -hmm. which um, using that information to make decisions to make units that actually counter uh, the opponent's build order is the only way that you're going to eke out a living in higher tier play. Um, there's there's not much to say uh, that uh, Farage and Bunker Buster both had loads and loads of fuel by the end of this match. Uh, and 
it's just it came down to the unit compositions. I, I can't have much to say other than I think those paratroopers were uh, the only missed opportunity that Farage could have afforded and that would have made a significant difference. It's possible that he could have, you know, upgraded an M3 into an anti-tank gun, but with all those packs, it just doesn't make any logistical sense. Yeah, they just get evaporated in one volley. Um... Yeah, I guess the only other thing that, and it, honestly, it's not even, a, it's not a knock on Farage, it's actually something I wanted to highlight. You saw the way he kept his Hellcats in lanes, right, so they couldn't be easily ganged up on. He was doing the same thing with his AT guns. Um, you know, I think if he ends up, if he gets a third AT gun out on the field, and he's able to support them with the rifles, and he keeps them in separate lanes so that eight rods can't drive past one without ending up in the arc of the other two, then maybe he's able to trade out a couple of the eight rods a little bit better. But man, like Bunker did such a good job with the aggression, just keeping him on the back foot. Like he was never able, like you were saying, never able to get that critical mass where he could like get some clean trades, knock out the eight rods without bleeding too much and like start to claw his way back into the map. That is exactly what kept Farage from overcoming his opponent, um, the, discounting the sniper, uh, that he had multiple Hellcats and multiple AT guns. He could just never put it all together because every moment that he tried to put it together, we've got eight rads on his doorstep wiping every unit on retreat. Uh, it was just a... The, the pressure is textbook execution by Bunker Buster in terms of this strategy and using mechanized assault for self-healing. This is mm -hmm. exactly how you play it. Uh, use this replay. Yeah. No, that, so that's a great point. So for Bunker Buster, right, like he knew, and looking back, you could see it, right? His response to the early game pressure from Farage was like, hey, look, I just have to hold on to my two fuel points. I don't need to harass I don't need to take his stuff like hell i don't even need the vps i just need to make sure that i have enough fuel that at the seven minute mark i can start pumping out eight rods right i can start winning some of these engagements against the infantry i can counter whatever light vehicles he has uh and then achieve some sort of critical mass and and then to his credit that strategy and that balance was working right because he's like okay i've got three eight rods i've got two at guns and i got some infantry Farage doesn't have a hard counter for any of this. Like, there's no artillery to deal with the team weapons. The Hellcats are good against dealing with the eight rods, but really vulnerable to the AT guns. The infantry are good against dealing with the AT guns, but really vulnerable to the eight rods. And so you're basically winning both of those hard counter fights right there. So, like, uh, why mess around? Why not just continue to use the strategy that's working for you? And you could see he really leaned into that. Um, he wasn't tempted to go for uh, the Panzer Company to get a Brumbear out, to get a P4. He didn't even like activate the Panther call-in. He certainly had the CPs for it at the end of the game. He just he had a strategy and he knew it would work. He just had to keep applying it aggressively. Come to think of it, Farage actually had one option that is probably not balance okay but he could have rebuilt the captain and then stacked it with the rifleman sprint to use it to snare some of those eight rads to finish them off mm -hmm. uh, not often used but that would have been a useful tool because once a rifleman gets double buff from sprint and captain they run at light speed <laughs> they can outpace vehicles yeah we actually saw that uh in a cast not too long ago where they like Usain bolted across the map to murder a sniper who thought he could just retreat. Um, so there's that, and then the captain also at Vet One gets access to marked vehicle. So another thing you need, like you need to knock out the eight rods who are doing the self repair with the self repair with the mechanized assault. Uh, that's another great option for you. Um, so speaking of which, right, you you highlighted the temptation sometimes to just pick the zeroing artillery, but uh, this match also highlighted the value of mechanized assault. So. Can you talk through that a little bit? I know it obviously it heals the units, but it also provides several other buffs. Sure. So in terms of vehicles, that's all you're going to get is you get magic auto repairs where the crew is fixing it <clears throat> while driving it. Uh, the common phrase, you know, we're building the car while driving it. Um, <laughs> that is a... Uh, that is all it does. Uh, when it comes to the infantry, uh, they actually get some super awesome buffs. They get 20% speed, 30% less damage, and they're 20% harder to hit. Uh, it's just that in this case, all Bunker cared about was that 10 repair rate. Those vehicles, <laughs> uh, they have nothing else going on. They don't get any extra damage. It's just the repair rate. So uh, 
you can combine the you know the ability to have some Panzer Grenadiers or Grens, but the power of raid package on light vehicles to be able to capture territory um, when you know all you need is eight rad. That's it. Just stick with the eight rad. It, yeah. uh, it mulches infantry. It's high speed and it can self repair. So you don't even need to put them back together. They'll piece themselves back together. Yeah, and and then even later on, you saw the P Grens got knocked out. One of the Grens got wiped. Uh, and what is what does he do? He says, "You know what? I don't need infantry. I'm just going to get more pioneers out to help keep my eight rods topped off." Um, and the the strategy worked, right? Two hard counters, uh, and just Farage just couldn't find the right combination of unit composition uh, to kind of unlock that. Um, the the last thing I will say, right? We mentioned like, hey man, Farage really pushing three snipers. That's kind of crazy. His third sniper was Vet three and survived to the end of the game. Like he, his sniper play was still really good. It just uh, bunker picked like the perfect strategy to counter it, right? And at, on that point, the counter to this is that from the get go of the match, exposing that upgraded uh, recon or scout squad into a pathfinder tells uh, bunker buster everything he needs to know as to what he's going to be dealing with this match uh it took until about the seven minute mark for farage to actually know what he was going to deal with mm -hmm. and again uh, farage was guaranteed committed to the cause of playing a sniper because he had the information that he had an eight rad before he built it and he still went for it. So yeah. it's clear that Farage has all the skill in the world. Uh, but again, eight rad natural predator to sniper. Yeah. And that's actually a good point, right? So you think about the airborne meta, the airborne battle group, you see the pathfinders, you know, okay, what, it, what is the battle group allow you to do? Drop AT guns. So most players, when they see that, uh, or when they use the airborne battle group, they're probably going to skip the motor pool tech, right? And go right for the tank depot. Maybe they get a weapon support center. Maybe they get a barracks, you know, but what it really tells you is you don't have to worry about chaffees and greyhounds. And so I think that just kind of locked it in for bunker buster. Like, Hey, the eight reds are going to be really viable because I'm not worried about a chaffee using flanking speed to get around my AT guns and smoke my eight rods. Instead, all I have to worry about are Hellcats, which are good, but a lot slower. And as we saw, like dreadfully inaccurate against light vehicles at range. You know, to your point here, Shark, I'm actually thinking about it. I actually like the Chaffee better than the Hellcat. And especially in this scenario, as they could drive circles around all of these AT guns and that they also have slightly better anti-infantry uh not that it matters uh <laughs> yeah. the, the chaffee would have been i think a more cost effective approach to counter this mid-tier spam of eight reds which is nuts right because in every other circumstance the hellcat's better it, it's 20 fuel more but it's got the best close range penetration in the game movement speed is still solid right uh accuracy against heavier vehicles is is fine but yeah, I think against the the eight rods with the smaller target size, you don't need the over penetration with the the Hellcat, right? So the the Chaffee is perfect. Yeah, the the value of hindsight and having you know a half hour to sit here and talk about the outcome of the game, we've decided the answer was back tech for motor pool, Chaffee swarm, knock out the eight rods, and then you force the late game, which is inevitably Brumbear and Panther against Hellcats and Bulldozer. And so case in point, uh, if you're looking to improve your co-game, invent time travel, don't share it with anybody, <laughs> and then you'll win every match. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, Space, you got anything else? No, sir. I, I think this was an excellent match. Uh, Farah G, always doing something different, uh, and uh, dedication to the cause with the sniper, truly entertaining to watch. Yeah, love to see it. Hey, this one was awesome. Uh, Space, thanks for casting this one with me. Appreciate you staying up late. And uh, for everyone else out there, uh, that's going to do it for us. We'll see you all in the next one.